right, so we're starting a new unit, and we're shifting gears from talking about electricity into talking about magnetism. So before we can talk about force and fields uh, for magnetism, we need to talk essentially about what is causing the magnetic field. So we're not going to be talking, we're going to be talking a lot about charges still, but we're talking about them in context of them generating a magnetic field. And so we have to be very clear up front that there's no such thing as a magnetic monopole. So for charges, we could isolate a negative and a positive charge. But when we talk about a magnet or something causing a magnetic field, there is no isolated north or south. So if you take a magnet and cut it in half, you end up with two magnets, both with a north and south pole. So there's no such thing as a magnetic monopole. So you can have singular charges, you can't have singular poles or monopoles for a magnet. So this is going to have some consequences to our physics going forward because we're doing a lot of things that look a lot like what we did with electric fields, but they don't quite work the same because of the fact that there's no such thing as an isolated pole. All right, so as I mentioned earlier, we're still going to be talking about charges because charges are actually what cause magnetic fields but a specific behavior of the charge that leads to a magnetic field. So a moving charge creates a magnetic field in the space surrounding it. And then another charge has to move through that field generated by the other moving charge to experience the magnetic force. So if one charge moving to create the magnetic field, another charge moving in order to experience the magnetic force generated by the magnetic field of that other moving charge. So there needs to be two charges and both of them have to be moving for this to work. All right, so now we can talk about how we're calculating this magnetic force. All right, so we have two ways of calculating magnetic force. The top one up here gives you simply the magnitude of the force. The second one is gonna give you magnitude and direction. So we're gonna take our charge and you'll note in the one with the magnitude, the charge is in the absolute value. When we get down here to the one that gives you the magnitude and direction, you leave the sign of the charge in. And essentially, we're taking the velocity of the charge experiencing the force times the magnetic field caused by the other charge, and then times the sign of the angle between the speed and the direction of the magnetic field. So I sort of demonstrated this over here on the right. So we have our magnetic field going to the right, we have the speed of the charge coming out of the page, and then the magnetic force is gonna be perpendicular to their plane, since we're doing a cross product down here. And so we get our maximum force when the magnetic field and the speed of the charge is 90 degrees from each other. We can also do this, as I've already hinted at, by doing the cross product. So taking the magnitude of the charge experiencing the force times its speed, crossed with the magnetic field of that other charge that is generating the field. And we'll discuss in the next chapter how we actually calculate this magnetic field strength. For now, we're going to be focusing on the charge experiencing the force. In topic 28, we'll start talking about the charge causing the magnetic field. The units for magnetic field strength are Tesla, so a Newton per amp meter. Another unit that could be mentioned is a Gauss. A Gauss is 10 to the minus four Teslas. So I wanna discuss briefly a right-hand rule, so especially since this one does not calculate the direction for you. So you're going to put your, point your fingers in the direction of V and curl your hand into, so that you grab B. So for right now, I would have my hand sideways with my thumb pointed up because my fingers would be pointed in the direction of V and I'd be curling the grab B, which would force my hand to go up. So your thumb tells you the direction of the magnetic force. Now, because this is a charge creating the magnetic field that causes the magnetic force, it also generates an electric field. So now we're gonna focus on this particular unit on magnetic forces, but we can't forget that that charge is also creating an electric field, so it's also exerting an electric force on 
the charge. So technically speaking, when we talk about the net force, it's a combination of the electric force and the magnetic force.